All right, welcome back, everyone. Our next talk is going to be about BuildBot Nix, a modern open source. Hey, I need to read the title. I, well, you can tell us what it is. I don't know them by heart. Okay, uh, let's welcome Magic RB. Okay, so uh, as has been said, this is a talk about a modern open source CI CD solution. Um, Okay, um, so some might say there is no good open source CI CD currently, and we specifically mean in the sense that we have something that is easy to deploy. That's one of the most important things. We don't want complicated deployments where you're fighting with NixOS tooling for like two days straight. It has to work out of the box, so you set it up and it just works. And one of the limitations of the things we have currently is that they don't integrate unless you're using GitHub Actions. Uh, they only can with GitHub or other forges that you might have. Um, and also, just for the speed of getting this thing running, we don't want it to be um, a from scratch project. Ideally, we have we built something which already does a lot of the scheduling, already does a lot of the distribution, the distributed build, and all the tra tracking and status reporting. But we just integrate Nix into it in some way or shape or form. Um, so just. Take Hydra, for example, like as an example of what we have currently. The Hydra, as we all know, is extremely heavyweight. One of the reasons is because it keeps track of every single store path. So if you're building uh, a closure of 20,000, 30,000 store paths, the UI might take a few seconds to load. I have the experience. Um, and specifically, it is a Nix packages scale CI for Nix packages scale problems. So unless you're building Nix packages, you probably shouldn't be using Hydra. Um, also, the integration that we have in Hydra with GitHub and Gitty, so we, is not great. Status reports are not really a thing. Normally, the way that it fetches is on a timer, not with, with like webhooks or anything like that. So it's not great. And especially with pull requests, Hydra doesn't do that. We have we have like off Borg and index packages and stuff like that. But Hydra doesn't do it itself. So just random question: Who here attempted to run Hydra? Just raise your hands at any point. OK, now, who here is still running a Hydra after that attempt? OK, actually decent. Um, so then, again, GitHub Actions is a different alternative to this problem. They're not Nix native, so you have to kind of work around the limitations of how normal people think CI CD should look. Uh, you cannot use the build sandbox generally, especially if you use not your own runners because you don't have access to any privileged operations which include sandboxing, unless we use user user namespaces. Um, with caching, it's hard to get the right or wasteful. And in general, you don't have like persistent directories that you can share between things. And you also don't know where they're running, so it's a bit difficult. Uh, and then with build locks, they either become a jumbled mess, or if you're running like um, individual jobs, in Nix in the actions, then you may be repeating builds. So you may be building the same thing twice on different runners. So it's not great in any case. Mm, and also, if you do it natively, just Nix eval something, you will get an out of memory error. You have to use Nix eval jobs or something like that. So out of this, what we get to is there are two programs, at least that I know of. So let's make the third one. So now we have three. Um, so build bot Nix. That's the thing we're talking about. That's the thing that we built. Again, another poll. Who knows about BuildBot Nix before reading the title of this presentation? Okay, quite decent. So let's start with what's BuildBot. So BuildBot is a CI CD framework. Um, it's written in Python. Uh, everything there is Python, and you write plugins in Python, and everything's nice. Well, as nice as Python is. Um, it's used by many projects, so OpenZFS, Gentoo, uh, Python, LLVM, and o Blender. Some of them use different UIs, all the versions, but it's built both in some way or shape or form. So essentially what we have is just Jenkins in Python, just a bit less cursed. Um, this is the UI, it's kind of like filled with stuff, but we see the different builders and we see the different runs of them. And so it gives you like an overview, which we don't get with GitHub Actions generally, or Gitty Actions. So what's BuildBot Nix? Well, it's a CI CD for Nix. And 
as I mentioned, build build supports plugins, and it's a plugin for build build. That's by the build build part. Um, it's also written in Python because we really don't have a choice in this matter. And one of the main points that we started with is that you can run it on PR safely because the configuration is server side, not uh, repo side. Um, and we're aiming for smaller projects, so it's not made meant for Hydra scale problems. If you have Hydra scale problems, you should be running Hydra and not this. Um, it's currently, like right now, used by Nix community and has been for quite some time. Um, and also the Nix NGI zero repositories, they also use BuildBot. In Nix community is one of the options, I think. So let's say that you have a flake like that um, and you want those checks which you have defined, which you can run on your CLI on your laptop. You want to run them in CI. So ideally, you would have the same checks on CI and on laptop. Someone else mentioned this here. Um, well, with BuildBot, if you if you build Nix, what you get if you just point BuildBot Nix at your repository on GitHub or Gitty, you get this kind of thing. Also, bug the BuildBot Nix build check should be not green because the build failed, but Bugs happen, and we'll, we know now about it. Um, on the buildbot side, we see something really similar where we have the different steps. So we do first do a git, then we evaluate, then we do build individually, uh, and then we clap the diaries, but that's not important. But we see the two builds, one of them failed, one of them succeeded. We see the architectures, the attributes, everything. Um, so you might say, okay, this is cool, uh, quite simple. How do I get this? Easily, somewhat. So you have this kind of NixOS configuration. And what you need to specify is first the domain that you're interacting with, because BuildBot needs to know its own domain. Then you need to enable GitHub, or Gitty if you want to use Gitty. Then you specify the secrets, so the workers file is for communication between the BuildBot master and its workers, and all the other ones are for GitHub. Um, then you specify your nickname, which, will, which is used for who can restart builds, who can con configure some stuff. The topic uh, limits which repos BuildBot monitors and interacts with. Uh, and finally, the job report limit is if you have a repo with hundreds of checks, like the next win people, you don't want to submit all the reports to GitHub because GitHub will A, rate limit you, and B, even if they didn't, the UI doesn't work with hundreds of checks. Um, and now you have BuildBot running after configuring some other things, but the BuildBot part is running. So what do you gain if you set this thing up? You can very easily, with just enabling a few options, get Gitty or FarJO running. It's the same API currently. GitHub is also natively supported and actually probably tested the most. Um, we also have Kashyx integration natively. So you just enable it, pass in the secrets, and you get Kashyx automatically. Um, you get post build steps, which Kashyx is just a special post build step that we have predefined. But you can do arbitrary things, and this is all on the um, on the server side, so the users can influence this. And these are not running any sandbox, so you have full power to do whatever you want. But you can influence it from the repository side. Um, we also have per repository settings. Almost, it's an open PR that is almost finished. Um, there, you can specify things like the attribute that you're building. You can specify the log file uh, and other things that we figure out that we want to change per repository. And finally. We have pre-repository effects. Some people are already using these in production. That's production. I don't know if it's actual production, but I've seen people use them. This is how we got the screenshot also. Uh, and you specify effects per repository, and they run in a sandbox using bubble wrap currently. Uh, and they execute after the whole build complete. So post build steps are executed for every single next build, while these are executed just at the end. And this can be used for continuous deployment. Um, and so, final remarks, BuildBot Nix 1.0 is here. It works for Nix community, it works for Nix NGI 0. And you should get your own today, or at a hack day, uh, because it's easy, and I hope that you will agree with me that it's quite easy to deploy. So I want to also thank the users of BuildBot Nix who reported bugs, broke the thing in surprising ways. They also provided me with the images I have shown because I didn't have them for Kashyx and stuff. Um, and I also want to thank Namtide who's funding this work and, well, whoever made the Beamer slide the deck thing I'm using. That's about it. Um, yeah, 
Questions? <laughs> Very cool. Uh, two questions. So, what's the resource needed to run this? Can I run it on a Raspberry Pi 3B? Uh, can you run BuildBot Nix? Yes. Can you actually evaluate something? No. I admit that the, I omitted that the workers would be running elsewhere. But the, yeah. you would have so BuildBot Nix currently. I think you can split it. Can you split it? Yeah. So it should be possible to split out the master and the workers, and because the workers run the evals locally. But if in because BuildBot has a concept of master worker, the master is actually what does the logic. The workers just execute commands. If you put the workers on not the Raspberry Pi 3B, you could. But then you might as well just put the master there and call it a good. Like right. the evals currently happen locally. You can't eval or build actually anything on a Raspberry Pi 3. I would say. All right. Second question. Uh, have you looked at uh, integrating with Sourcet? Yes, uh, that's either that's something that I personally do want. Um, the one option is just writing a thing in Python to integrate with it, which would be probably the same option. I also tried to write a Gitty Sourcet adapter in Haskell. It can list repos currently. That's about it. It's possible. Uh, might also help the Sourcet ecosystem in general because their API is kind of bespoke. Um, so if you had an adapter, it would help in general, but it, it's possible, but it, we haven't done it. Also, we're planning to add like uh, the usual polling step, uh, polling git repos, where it will just pull on a timer like it has with us, so that just works for everything. How are you actually running the Nix builds? Is it natively? Uh, yeah, so the Nix builds are just run with calling Nix build, uh, just shutting out. Um, and the Nix eval is run with Nix eval jobs. Uh, also shelling out, but that's run with Nix eval jobs, so it has all the nice properties of that. The Nix build does just like Nix build command, just shelling out in order. But there is some scheduling between them, so if you have like A and B as, an, as a check, and A depends on B, then it will first compile B or build B and then build A, so it's not like conflicting with each other. That's quite recent, actually. And I have to thank the Lix people who actually implemented the first version and just imported their commits and made it a bit more sane. But I have to still thank them for the initial version of that. Cool, thanks. Um, so, is the Forge pushing a, a new event on the Billboard Nix uh, instance, or is the Billboard Nix instance? How, how do you know about new commits or pushes or pull webhooks? So, Billboard Nix has a system at startup. It will a call out to GitHub, list all the repos, then list their tags, filter it out, and set up webhooks itself for all the repos it cares about, and then you get webhooks in. So if the webhook is lost, you don't get a build event, but generally, if GitHub doesn't screw something up, it should work. So yeah, that's all. Oh yeah, and the QR code is the link to the repo. <laughs> yeah, that maybe would have been useful to mention. Is uh, GitLab integration in scope? Uh, we don't have GitLab integration currently, but again, possible to implement. Uh, the main the main blocker for SourceHat is there is no actual plugin for BuildBot which would do SourceHat, but I'm 80% positive that there is one for GitLab. So that's just uh, not that many changes. We can just copy paste a lot of the code from GitHub and get something quite quickly. It's very doable. We just haven't had the incentive yet. Okay. No one asked. Thanks for the talk. And thanks for building BuildBot Next to all of you. Um, I've been using it. And on this topic of webhook integration, I'm wondering whether it could be, it could also be generic. So you provide, um, you provide the, the users the webhook URLs. So instead of automating everything, you could make a general purpose instruction of just giving them this is what you need to call. Uh, e e so. Uh, yes, so that could be done, but that also, that because it's kind of split the integration with the forge is split in two parts. You have the part which sets up the webhooks and evaluate and like prepares everything. Then the actual bit which does the eval and the build, that's generic over everything. And then the result where it submits the status reports. That part is also specific to the forge. So that's the step towards generalizing for polling based repos where you have to configure this bit as polling and this bit as 
either a status to some, I don't know, send an email, call a command, whatever, right? So that's generalization on these two ends, and we don't have this generalization yet. It's tied to the backend, to the forge currently, but that's like swapping out a few Python classes, it's fine. So it could be done, definitely. Yeah, that makes sense, thanks. Not not yet, unfortunately. Open an issue. <laughs> Does uh, remote builders fit into the picture somehow? Mm, yeah, so I mentioned the master worker build bot thing. Uh, that's their internal uh, implementation, which means that any commands you run from the build bot build environment will execute on a specific worker, uh, or actually any worker, I think, in our version. Uh, and that worker, when it calls next build, that will then go to a remote builder. So there is like a two-level abstraction there. It's kind of confusing, but yeah. Oh, and this moved. OK, I won't shake my head anymore. Um, but yeah, that's kind of why it works. So yes, you can configure just in xconf uh, the file. You can just configure whatever you want, and it'll use that. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. OK, let's give our speaker another round of applause.